feels good when you pull out your car, when you hit the road, you turn on your favorite music. You feel that feeling of kind of euphoria. You feel like the whole world in slow motion. And as your car sways up and down, you get that feeling that, you know, you're the only one that exists out there. First moment that I fell in love with low riding, I was about 10 years old and my neighbors across the street, there was about three or four brothers and I remember day after day they were welding, cutting and you can hear the banging on metal. And I remember the day they brought the car out, one of the brothers had lowered the car. And when he lowered the car, I automatically stopped riding my bike and I was so infatuated by the fact that the car was being lowered. It looked like a spaceship to me, you know, because I had never seen anything like that before. And at that moment, I knew that I wanted to have one of those cars. I have a convertible 1964 Chevy Impala Supersport. It's a jet black in color. It's got striping on the hood, trunk, sides. It's got a 350 motor with a 350 uh, transmission. Got a lot of gold trimming, gold highlights, and some gold leafing on the side moldings. It's got a uh, two-pump setup, lifted front, back, side to side. The wheels are 13-inch OG wire wheels. They're powder-coated black with gold laces, gold nipples, and engraved knockoffs. The interior, it's an original uh, patterned black interior. What I love most about my car is uh, the, the color. It's, it's a deep jet black color, being black and that it has a lot of the gold trimming. It makes it look really classy. I think the reason why I, I fell in love with Lowriders was because it just had a unique um, style. It, it stood out from all the other types of cars, whether it was a rat rod or a hot rod. Every style has its own unique form. Low riding to me, it really represented like a lot of who I was, you know, and what I liked. Well, I was born in Tracy, California, but I was raised in Stockton, California. I'm the oldest of three siblings. I have two younger brothers. My parents were farm workers. They uh, harvested tomatoes, asparagus, uh, corn, beans, sugar beets. They were hardworking people. When I was 10 years old, uh, my dad made the decision to move out from Stockton because he could see that I was hanging out with the wrong crowd. Growing up in Stockton, at that point, you know, I had a kind of a new group of friends. Kids that were, had the same type of parents that I had, you know, hardworking, families uh, working out in the fields and agriculture. And I quickly connected with them. I could understand and I could relate to what type of family they were from because they resembled the same family that I had. So when I was 12 years old, I got my first job uh, picking apricots. At first I thought it was fun, but after like three days I realized you know, how hard the work was and how much it took out of your body. Uh, I looked at my parents at a lot more differently because I knew that they were, had been doing this for years and I couldn't understand how you know, their bodies were withholding you know, having to do this type of work. I learned quickly after that third day that, you know, that that wasn't the type of work that I wanted to do for the rest of my life because it was, it was good work. It was, it was a lot of humble, good people that were doing it. I just felt like physically I wouldn't be able to do that for the rest of my life. When I was uh, 14, and I remember there was this uh, program called the Summer Youth Work Program through the school. They placed me at a, unemployment, a local unemployment office. And my job was, you know, to sit and file a lot of forms and shred paper. So at times when I was working at the unemployment office, we would receive people who needed help with translation. And so they would have me help them out with their forms. I knew that my future was in helping people out. And I remember uh, about a year later, I got a job at a local boys and girls club and working with youth and at-risk youth. That kind of uh, sparked an interest in, in, in working with youth because a lot of these kids that were at the boy, local Boys and Girls Club, they didn't have any role models. They didn't have people who, you know, they could look up to. I knew that at that point that I would probably be working with youth. I studied at Stanislaus State University in Turlock, and uh, about my second year in college, 
I geared my uh, education towards uh, criminal justice and I got my degree in, in criminal justice. And that last year, I did an internship for the local county probation. It was really difficult to make that connection with youth because they saw you as kind of a you against us, you know, you against me kind of attitude. And you have the badge and you have the cuffs. And knowing that I was in law enforcement, it was made it really difficult for them kind of to get that trust from me. I realized that I was going to have to do more preventive work. My change of feelings and change of heart was in more preventive work than, than the working with youth that were already in the system. And so I started working with a nonprofit agency that uh, worked with at-risk youth and in prevention. And I thought, you know, this is where, I, this, I think this is where my heart is at, you know, is helping youth and working with you and being able to understand them and being able to, to know that, hey, you know what, I'm here to listen to you. I, I know that we all make difficult and sometimes hard uh, choices, but I'm here to work with you and to listen to you, to advise you to make a better decision and, and be able to uh, walk you through this process. After I finished my degree in criminal justice, I went back to get a certification in counseling and student and family support. So currently, I'm the program manager for a program named Healthy Start at Modesto City Schools. And we provide services to families and students there that um, where they can come in into our center and uh, get mental health help, support. Uh, they can get uh, school supplies, housing. Uh, we help with a lot of the food drives. Uh, a lot of the backpack drives, parent club meetings, uh, so we can talk about the issues within the community and uh, what is happening and how we can get together and work together to help uh, fight and combat those issues. What I like about my job is working with the youth, being able to uh, work with students, listen to them, and, and, and enjoying their stories after they've left. Uh, and become young adults and they've got their own families or now they're in college and they're working, you know, towards a certain degree. And letting them see, you know, what opportunities are out there for them, if they can make those changes and how I can help them make those changes, you know, for them, I think is, is, is key and important. It's, it's a responsibility that we have as adults, you know, to, to be, uh, be able to give back to those same people that, you know, that are going through the difficulty, difficult times that, you know, that I went through as a youth. You know, one of the things, fascinating things about my job is that I'm able to, you know, to talk to them not only about the difficulty of things, but um, I incorporate a lot of what I do through my car. Being able to use that avenue is really key for me because I make a, a good connection with youth, you know, whether it's bringing the car to the, to the school and explaining to them, you know, the culture of low riding or, or the uh, science behind hydraulics, you know, and what makes a car go up and down, you know, and what it takes, what kind of hard work it takes, you know, and dedication it takes to build one of these cars. And I think when students are able to make, I make that connection and I think that's, that's, a really gratifying part about what I do. I think I would tell somebody who doesn't really know much about lowriders or has that negative stereotype to come and maybe join us and maybe take them for a cruise, you know, take them to a lowrider gathering. And I think once they get that understanding that the people that are at those shows are just normal average people that love lowriders and have a passion for, for cars. My name is Carlos Ramirez. I am a counselor and community activist, and I'm a lowrider role model.